Well there, hello everyone. Welcome to another live episode of Be the Boss of Your Money, where I want you to be the boss of your money, not your money to be the boss of you. You know, it's very easy to happen that your money becomes the boss of you, that you lose control of your personal finance, that things like bills and so many other things, other obligations get in the way. It's called life. But with proper planning, proper perspective, and a lot of patience, you could beat it and become the boss of your money. That is how I define financial success, by the way. Not everybody's going to become a billionaire. What can I say? But you could still be successful by being the boss of your money, regardless of your financial situation, regardless of how much you presently make. You can always find things to improve. Even if they don't improve right away, you could take steps to improve in the future. But that's the key. Taking steps, well, also the key is knowing what steps to make. That's what I can help you do. <clears throat> That's the point of this whole entire show. So we're going to roll the introduction. We're going to talk about volatility, these wild swings in the market, how you can help reduce volatility in your own portfolio, if it is getting to you, that is. What is a truly, what is a balanced portfolio? What does that look like? It's a pretty simple answer, but I think it needs... Uh, an explanation, a little more detail, a little more education on that. And is now um, is now a good time to do a Roth IRA conversion with stocks still down off their highs. So let's roll the intro, and then we are going to have a really good show. Hello and welcome. If we haven't met yet, my name is Mitch Goldberg. I'm a financial advisor with the wealth management firm, Client First Strategy. This show is about helping you be better with personal finance, investing, business. The name of the show is Be the Boss of Your Money because I want you to be the boss of your money, not your money to be the boss of you. If you're watching this in the live presentation right now, I'd like to welcome you. Please ask questions in the comments. I'd love to answer them. Words of encouragement are always welcome. And if you're watching this in the replay, I'd like to welcome you also. Please ask your questions in the comments, should you have any, as if you're watching this in the live and I will check back. I will see those questions. I would love to answer them. That's to me is the best part of this is when you have some dialogue and, and back and forth. That to me is the best part. If you agree with what I'm saying, you are welcome to let me know. If you disagree with what I'm saying, you are welcome to let me know. That's the back and forth that I love. That's the banter. The banter. That's the fun. You know, we get back and forth into things. So I'm making these shows a little bit shorter because the weather is getting nicer and I have a feeling people are going to be doing things at 430, like maybe thinking about uh, doing nice things outdoors. I know I am and immediately after this show. I am going to be jumping on my bike with one of my kids and we're going to go for a very long, healthy bike ride and I can't wait. Okay. So anyway, what's the deal for today? Let's take it to the tape, do the share screen. This is how we start every show with, with a, an update. And just so you know, folks, this is, um, this is more than just an update. Okay. I, I'm not here just to do another, you know, market wrap uh, kind of show. My my objective is actually to add much needed perspective. So I'm just working the controls here. We're going to share the screen. I want to give you perspective. What I, what I really want is for you to walk away with like, not just, oh, the market was up or the market was down. I want you to know why. I want you to understand what happened because the more you get into this, there are going to be times when you can just eyeball a few stocks, eyeball the market, and you will have You'll be you'll 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 know why things move with interest rates, with Fed policy, with monetary stimulus, with fiscal stimulus, and that's when you really start to become familiar with the market. And that's what I want you to do. I want you to have familiarity with the market because when you have familiarity, things like bear markets don't scare you so much. I always like to say, "What good is an investment plan if you can't stick with it?" So, I wasn't. Um, overly scared. You know, I wasn't scared out of my wits or anything when the market tanked and we hit this pandemic and states started to close, the economy closed. To me, it's just a matter of how long will things take to come back? Short amount of time, intermediate or long term? 
so far, things have recovered, I think, a lot better and quicker as far as the stock market goes than most people expected. So let's take a quick look. The Dow today was up 377 points. The S&P up 32 points. NASDAQ up 0.91%, the Russell 2000 barely up 35 basis points, and the VIX finally backed off a little bit down 2.67. You want the VIX to go down. The higher the VIX is, the more fear there is in the market. The, it usually indicates um, a negative down market and that the market could go down further. We recently, last week, we had the VIX below 30. It was in the mid 80s uh, at the bottom of this so far bear market recession that we're in. Just to let you know the kind of volatility the volatility we had, the Dow was down about 450 points. So it had more than an 800 point swing from uh, trough to peak, okay? If we had a up or down 800 point day, that would be pretty significant. We did have 800 points of travel, but it was contained in a, uh, a smaller band. So let's go on and take a look at the next screen. The next one is we're going through some watch lists. These are the FANG M stocks, Facebook, Up, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google, Microsoft. These are the biggest publicly traded companies. So when all of these are up, they have a lot of heft in the S&P 500, which is an index that is, you know, it's the major benchmark of benchmarks, you can't invest directly into an index, but you could invest in a security that tracks or mimics an index. Ask your questions, folks. I know you're out there. I see some comments coming in already. I'm very excited about that. Um, so when you have, you see, if you have a company that's a trillion dollar company, it, it has a big impact like Amazon, Microsoft, Apple, they, they have a big impact on the S&P 500. But in the Dow Jones, in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, a stock, um, that has a hundred dollar price stock price will have a bigger impact than a stock with a fifty dollar price stock because it's price weighted. So you could have a trillion dollar company at fifty dollars a share, or a five hundred billion dollar company at a hundred dollars a share. The smaller five hundred billion dollar company will have a bigger impact. Its stock price will have a bigger impact on the Dow because the higher the price, the more of an impact the uh, Dow divisor has on that index. In any event. When you have these big monster-sized companies all moving up together, they have a way of pulling up the rest of the market with them. So these are the stocks that investors are relying on today for investment returns and to move the markets. When these stocks go up, it pulls everything with them. It's just like this, like it's like a black hole. They just suck everything into it, and vice versa. When they go down, uh, they they pull everything down with it as well. So that's that. So the Fang M stocks. The M is Microsoft down here at the bottom. Let's go on to the next one. Sector ETFs. Financials got crushed yesterday. Today they were up. What I've been saying is when you have industrials, financials, uh, building materials, you know, the cyclical type stocks, when they lead the way, that is a positive sign. So today's a V day, you know, V for, for um, swish down in the economy market, swish up in recovery. We know that's not really, in, in my opinion, it's not realistic to expect a V recovery in the economy, but it doesn't mean we can't have a V recovery in the stock market. But today was definitely a, a V kind of day. Yesterday was more like an L day. Before that, it was a W day. So we have all these letters to describe the um, shape of, of the recovery. So financials up, discretionary up, discretionary are companies that make things you want, not things that you need. Discretionary companies would be like motorcycles jewelry, uh, you know, restaurants, those are discretionary as opposed to uh, consumer staples that are things you need like toilet paper and food and toothpaste, okay? Building materials had a nice update, energy as well. So that's the um, kind of day we had. So that's why you had some decent performance between financials that are up today and the Fang M stocks today, you were you were bound to have a, a decent day in the market. Just to give an example, some of the industrials, United Rentals, Cummins Engines, uh, Johnson Controls, Honeywell, Emerson. You look at the percentage move, 6%, 5%, 5, 4, 3, 3. These are big moves. Even Southwest Airlines is up over 3%. I'm just going to scroll here. American Airlines is up a little bit. And then you have some of the market movers in the Dow. 
uh, American Express, United Health, Cisco had a you know better than expected earnings report last night. J.P. Morgan up four percent. Dow Chemical, Disney. You know these are the companies that have been getting beaten up when we worry about coronavirus, the economy not being able to open, or a rebound in COVID nineteen cases because states may open up too quickly without enough safeguards in place. That's not a prediction. That that. It's just the reason why these stocks go up or down, depending on the thought process of the particular day. So let me just stop sharing that. So everything is dependent on this. Okay, I'm going to give you the the play the playbook for the next couple of weeks. Today we had the first time unemployment claims come out. They were you know close to three million. So another three million people filed for unemployment. So we're up to about thirty. We we're close to like forty million. Jobs lost in like the last eight weeks. It's just mind boggling. But if we can start, we, we have three more Thursdays until the June 5th, Friday non farm payrolls. We just had the May non, you know, the April non farm payrolls come out about a week ago. And now we have another payroll number coming up June. So the May, May ends. And then the first Friday of June, we get the non farm payrolls. But we have three more Thursdays. Thursdays are important because every Thursday is when the unemployment first-time unemployment claims are announced. So we've got, we need to see those start coming down and maybe even go into positive territory. It could happen in the next few weeks as states start to reopen and certain sectors start to kick in and start hiring people and bringing employees back. It could happen. But if we don't get some kind of improvement or better than expected figures coming forward, then we have to wait until July and then it's a matter of will investors and, and all economic participants have the patience to it. So I'm just giving you an idea of what people are looking for. It could be good. It could be bad. But I'm letting you know what's in store, the big thing. Okay, so we've been on a roller coaster ride, and I want to talk about volatility. And if you're out there, stay with me. Stay with me. I'm going to hit your questions. I'm going to thank you for being here. I, I love that. But I, I want to get through this. We've been on now for about 12 minutes. So volatility. How do you reduce volatility in a portfolio? There are a couple of things you could do. They all have to do with diversification. Now, diversification is a strategy that we use to reduce risk, but it doesn't necessarily prevent your account from going down in a generally down market. That's what I have to tell you about diversification. So, but the more diversification is really does two things. It, it, number one, if you have only a few stocks, for example, and one goes down to zero, That'll have a big impact on your net worth and your ability to reach your financial goals going forward. But if you have a lot of stocks and you know one or two go to zero, you'll be okay because the other stocks can help compensate for that. And then there's diversification that helps you um, reduce risk with asset classes. So now you've got stocks, and then you maybe you'll diversify with with bonds and with cash, your cash equivalents like money markets, CDs, savings account. And then maybe you'll diversify with international stocks, small cap stocks, international. But when you have different asset classes, you start to diversify. And what I mean by diversification is not just avoiding putting all your eggs in one basket, but having different securities that zig while others zag. So ordinarily, when stocks go down, bonds will go up and vice versa. So you have non-correlated assets or assets that don't necessarily move in lockstep with each other. So if you diversify with um, you know, 10 large cap technology stocks and one is down, they'll probably all be down. But if you diversify with a tech stock, a healthcare stock, a utility stock, a consumer staple stock, you start, they, they, they move differently in different market environments and you start to get what's, what is a less volatile, smoother ride. If you need to really, if, if this volatility in the market, like we just had a couple of really bad days, and even though today was a decent day, it doesn't compensate uh, for you know Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. We had a good Thursday, but w w it wasn't enough to really compensate for the earlier part of the week. So if this volatility is really wreaking havoc on your psyche and it's just the, the investment risk you're taking turns out <clears throat> isn't for you and that's okay. That is what puts ah, my favorite drink, Dunkin' Large Ice with half and half. But if the um, if the volatility is too much for you and you just can't stick with your investment plan, that's okay. That's what puts the personal into personal finance. 
make personal finance personal again. That's what I say. So that's okay. What you want to do is reduce your stock exposure and add things like bonds, short-term bonds, cash, cash equivalents. I don't want to make specific recommendations here in just a live stream. If you want to speak to me about how you could uh, better diversify or diversify to a portfolio that's more to your liking, to what's more um, in your best interest, you let me know. I'm here and I'm happy to uh, spend uh, 10, 15 minutes with anybody on the phone and you know, and send you on your merry way, okay? No, no, no obligation on your part. Let me just put a, a banner up here. I meant to put this on before, okay? Um, market perspective, here we go. All right, so that is the piece on how to reduce <clears throat> volatility. And so what is a balanced portfolio? So as you get older, you wanna start with a non-balanced portfolio. So 20s, 30s, all that should have say even 40s, you know, stocks are for you, risk assets, because you've got so much time ahead of you to get through these ups and downs. And you want companies that eventually grow, they grow their earnings, their revenues, they become more attractive to uh, invest other investors, and then other investors buy them, and it causes these stocks to go up. Okay, they buy the shares, they take supply out of the market. And stocks go up in price. That's the mechanical part of how stocks work, right? So it's not so much that you want to buy a stock that goes up. You want to buy a stock that you hope your fellow investors will buy. Because that's what's really going to lift the stock up. You're not going to do it on your own with your little buying power. It's a big market, trillions. So you need other investors to believe what you believe. Okay? And that's what you need. So a balanced portfolio is typically 60% stock. 40% bonds, or it could be 50-50. Um, that, that's typically balanced portfolios. And if you're worried about volatility, a, a balanced portfolio is a it's, a, it's a worthy way to go to help reduce your, um, your volatility. We, we categorize things. You know, there are uh, growth portfolios, uh, conservative growth portfolios, balanced, conservative, then, you know, conservative, moderate portfolios, moderate conservative. So there's all kinds of ways to slice and dice it. But ultimately, we want to find a portfolio that has had historical ups and downs, historical volatility that will um, help, help reduce the volatility enough to keep you invested uh, for the long term. So that, that's it's one of the most important things that a financial advisor can do. And that's what I, I certainly what I do for clients. Last thing I want to talk about. And first, I want to just hit up some questions out here and see who's out there. Okay. So we're going to just check out there. We've got a couple of thumbs up. Hey, Jerry. Great to see you, my man. Awesome. Judy is out there with a heart. Hugh, Judy. Okay. We've got a couple of questions out there. And then we're going to check. Uh, we're going to check. We're going to check LinkedIn right after that. So, uh, Tom, Tom, hi, Mitch. The market hasn't hasn't moved much in the past month. What quarter do you feel will we have the most impact in either direction? It's a good question. I know a lot of people say a good question where they don't have an answer. They go, good question, because it gives them a moment to think about. But I do have an answer for you. You know, I actually think that the third quarter of this year will really be the tell, uh, the September. So, you know, the, the quarter that ends in September. Because that includes the summer months, June, well, not June, it includes July, August, and September. That's an important month, uh, an important quarter, because you'll be far enough into the state's reopening phase. Just want to be on record for saying this. We must open the economy. I'm not saying don't do it haphazardly. Stick with the social distancing. Everybody has to be part of this. You know, uh, you know, I'm starting to see people become a little loose with the social distancing effort. You know, they're not wearing their masks, not wearing their gloves or whatever. We, you know, we all need to keep trying. You know, we, we all need, to, we're all in this together. We have to open the economy though. But I, I want people to respect the social distancing still because I, I don't want to see outbreaks. And that, that what will probably happen is you'll see some outbreaks and some, towns, counties, cities, regions, and those areas will have to be slammed shut in their economy. But everybody will suffer, not just the people that didn't respect the social distancing. 
I'm in favor of opening the, the economy right now, right this minute, yesterday, a week ago. We just have to do it carefully. That, okay, that, that's what we have to do. We can't say, let's wait for a vaccine. What if a vaccine doesn't come out for two years? Th th then, then what? We're just going to have the, the government just keep spinning another, you know, two or three trillion dollars a month of printed money. We, we can't keep doing that. OK, so that, that's my answer. So. Um, Richard Head is out there. Hi, Mitch. You're doing. Th thank you so much, sir. Hi, Mitch. You're doing. Uh, hi, Mitch. You're doing a great job. Really great and inspiring. And I need your input. What would you do if one of your employees was causing problems where it got to the stage where they were taking and you think you should sack him or. Well, now I put that on the uh, stream there. But uh, it's hard to see if that, well, what would I do if one of my employees was just um, becoming a problem, causing problems where it got to the stage where they were taking a you-know-what on your desk and you think, you, uh, you know, if, if, the, if the relationship isn't respectful, um, the employee has to go. I don't know if this is regarding the uh, PPP loan, like you want to, you don't want to give up the free money for the PPP loan. Well, that money that you would have had to pay that employee with, you'll have to return. Um, sim simple as that. But on the other hand, you won't you won't have had to have paid that employee either. So it's it's kind of a wash. Maybe you could use it though to hire somebody new. We have who else up there? Hey, Phil, great to see you. I love the picture of you, by the way, and a great picture of you too, Bill. Good to see you. Thank you for always joining me, Bill. You're the best. I'd love to uh, just. Shoot the breeze with you one of these days, you know. I, I really appreciate you being here. We have Jerry. Hey there. I'm watching and enjoying the beautiful weather. You like watching on your phone out in your yard in this incredible weather. By the way, Jerry, uh, I need some bike trail advice from you. I know you're a big uh, cyclist, so um, we have to, we have to talk about that. I know you go down through uh, Bethpage State Park, and then you go down to the South Shore, and you know. I need some direction from you, okay? So let me just check out here, and then we're going to talk about Roth conversions. Got a few people out there in LinkedIn land. So I want to thank you. Hey, Eric, good to see you, buddy. Your listeners really should call you. Hey, I agree. Thank you, and, and your listeners should call you too. Eric is a financial advisor who is incredibly talented, uh, and very smart and very caring. He was my guest about, was it a week or two ago? You were my guest. It feels like a month ago. We'll have to do it again. And I really appreciate you coming on to my show and taking your time to speak with us. And we have Ryan out there. Thank you so much, Ryan. Ryan Stark and I, uh, Ryan's a financial advisor. We spoke earlier today and I'm going to be uh, a guest on Ryan's live stream probably next Tuesday, but he's going to get back to me. Let me know if it's Tuesday or Wednesday, whatever, but we will get it together. And uh, Sriram, always good to see you, my man. Thank you so much for always being so supportive, being out there for me. I really appreciate it. It means a lot to me. So um, let's go on. One more thing. We're going to talk about the Roth conversion. Okay. You, you could, the beauty of a Roth is that when you have to, um, when you get older, Okay, 72, that's the new age, to take money out of your uh, IRA, required minimum distributions. You take the money out, you have to take required minimum dis distributions from your IRA, and you have to pay taxes on it. Well, you got a tax break putting a little bit of money into an IRA, a little bit of a tax break, but the money grows, so presumably you'll be paying a lot more in taxes when you take the money out. But with a Roth IRA, you don't have to pay taxes on the money, but you don't, you don't get a tax break for your money that you put into it. That's I, I, I love the idea of a Roth IRA for uh, most people that I encounter. Just happens to be that I find a Roth IRA is, is, is a really good solution for them. So the, um, and with the Roth, you, you don't get a little tax break when you put the money into the Roth IRA, but you get a huge tax-free gain if you're going long-term, you know, decades out. Um, having said that, a lot of people put money into an IRA and they say to themselves, I wish I had a Roth IRA instead. Well, you got a tax break to put the money into the IRA. So if you take the money out of the IRA and move it into a Roth IRA called a Roth conversion, you do have to pay money on those on that. You have to pay tax money. You have to pay taxes on the money that you move from the Roth, um, from the IRA to the Roth. 
You have to pay taxes on the money that you took. You move from the IRA, the traditional IRA, to the Roth IRA. You get a um, a little bit of a break. I believe now you're, you're getting you're getting two years to do it to pay the taxes. Great, uh, but the lower your traditional IRA is, the lo- you know the less money you're moving over. You're converting the less money you're converting to your Roth. So since the market's down, and you may have been thinking about doing a Roth conversion, might as well do it now while the market's down. I, I can't tell you if we're at a bottom or not. But the market is down. So you've got less money to move, which means you pay less taxes from the conversion. So that's a big thing going around now is now a good time to do a Roth conversion. I think if you're interested in doing a Roth conversion, now is a very good time to have that chat with your financial advisor and include your CPA in the discussion as well. So that's my take on whether or not now is an opportunity to do a Roth conversion. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you all for joining me. It means a lot to me. I'll have more information. Um, I put a poll out yesterday. I had a pretty good response to identify my favorite financial YouTubers, of which I have a few really good ones who I learned a lot from. So I'll put that together. I can't say I'll get it out tomorrow, but that'll be coming up soon. All right. I'll speak with you guys soon. Thank you so much.